Today, we are going to explore the origins of the strange Moon class Ekranoplan, the Caspian Monster. Part 1 The Caspian Sea Monster. In 1967, amidst warm apple pie and the Vietnam War, the CIA was busy investigating everything, really. I kid you not, I found Romanian train schedules from the 50s while researching this. Anyway, I digress. It's 1967, the Cold War is hot in Vietnam, and the CIA is spying on the USSR. On June 21st, the National Photographic Interpretation Center sent out a memo in reference to a large aero or hydrodynamically shaped object is observed resting on barges in a basin adjacent to the Makachkala ammunition plant Vigato 182, which is located on the western shores of the Caspian Sea. The object appears similar to a large aircraft minus wings and has an overall length of 320 feet. Span of what relates to the swept horizontal stabilizer with positive dihedral is blank. Span of wing roots is blank with a root cord of 70 feet. Diameter of the object is blank. The object which is seen on non-stereo photography from this mission was not present in blank and is first seen on KH blank. At the time, a portion of what appears to be fuselage minus what appears to be the tail section was observed. The object became known as the Caspian Monster due to the KM markings that the CIA observed. I'm sure it was known at the time, but the KM markings stood for Korob Maket, meaning prototype ship in Russian. By the end of the week, KM was prioritized greatly, since no one had any clue what this airplane or ship was. The CIA set up a dedicated task force and initially assumed it to be an unfinished conventional aircraft. After some more reconnaissance missions, it was determined that the object was a possible surface effect ship. It wasn't until the 70s and the early 80s that the CIA really cracked the code behind the Caspian monster and its subsequent models. They really kept a close eye on this Soviet project. We've been looking at some of the sanitized copies approved for release. Do you know what sanitized copies mean? Let me know in the comments below. Part 2 Ground Effect Vehicle So, what exactly was this so called Caspian Sea Monster? It was, in fact, a ground effect vehicle. Ground effect vehicles are able to move over the surface by gaining support from the reactions of the air against the surface of the earth or water. For the most part, they are designed to glide over a level surface like the sea by making use of the aerodynamic interaction between the moving wing and the surface below. Some models can operate over any flat area such as frozen lakes or flat plains, similar to a hovercraft. Sorry, I mentioned hovercrafts and now I can't help myself. I have to show you the LCAC. The US Navy utilizes this landing craft air cushion hovercraft to transport weapons, equipment and even personnel. And guess what? Concept designs for this bad boy began in the early 1970s. Could the discovery of the KM have had anything to do with that? Okay, back to the Caspian Sea Monster. The GEV was designed by Rostislav Alexeyev while he worked at the Central Hydrofoil Design Bureau. The design and construction period of two years was actually relatively short for a project this size. The KM had an official wingspan of 123 feet, a length of 302 feet, and a maximum takeoff weight of 535 tons. It was designed to fly at altitudes of 16 to 33 feet. With specifications like that, the KM held the title of the largest and heaviest aircraft in the world until 1988, when, and don't quote me on this, the strategic airlift cargo aircraft AN-225 Miria was launched. How fast could this baby go? During testing, it was shown that the KM had an optimum fuel efficient cruising speed of 267 miles per hour, with maximum operating speeds of 311 miles per hour. Yeah, but that still doesn't answer the question, does it? How fast could this baby go? There are two sources on this information. One claims the maximum speed achieved was 404 miles per hour, while the latter claims 460 miles per hour. The KM was at first seen as a promising vehicle specialized for use by military and rescue workers, but its design caused many difficulties. Progress slowed and Alexeyev moved on to other Ekranoplan projects. 
It was tested on the Caspian Sea for an extensive 15 years until 1980. During a test, the KM was damaged and absolutely no attempts to save it were made. It was left to float in the Caspian Sea until it sank about a week later. It is believed that the KM is still at the bottom of the sea, considering it weighed like 500 tons. Part 3 Moon Class Ekranoplan as I mentioned, Alexeyev moved on to different projects, one of which was the MD-160, the sole completed Loon class Ekranoplan. At this point, I feel like I have to mention that the International Maritime Organization are a bunch of no fun having nerds that classify this marvel of technology as just a maritime ship. And I mean, they're not half, they're not that wrong. Think of these Ekranoplans as very, very fast ships or somewhat slow planes. The MD-160 was completed in 1975 and boasted a length of 242 feet and a wingspan of 144 feet. It had a measly, comparatively speaking, capacity of 100 tons and an operational speed of 342 miles per hour. The source of propulsion were the eight Kuznetsov NK-87 turbojet engines, which are featured prominently at the front of the craft. It is clear as day the sheer size and magnitude of the original KM design was simply too much for steady operations. The Loon class had a range of 1,000 nautical miles, which at top speeds would take about three and a half hours. It would take six officers and nine subordinates to operate the craft. As its main armament, the MD-160 featured six fixed elevation P-270 Mosquit or Mosquito missile launchers. It was the only model of its class ever built to completion, and obviously the only one that ever entered service with the Soviet Navy. It's worth mentioning that the Soviets did want to build a second Loon class Ekranoplan. After some maritime disasters, it was meant to be deployed in future maritime search and rescue missions, with seating for up to 500 passengers. At that point, it was called the Spasato, literally, rescuer. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the project for a second craft was cancelled for financial reasons. The unfinished craft is stored in an old industrial complex in Nizhny Novgorod. Part 4 The 1990s and Beyond it's unclear exactly when the MD-160 was retired, but the late 1990s is as good as guess as any. The craft rusted away at the Kaspisk naval base for over 20 years. On July 31st, 2020, the MD-160 was moved for the first time in years, with the intention of being put on public display at the planned Patriot Park in Derbent, Dagestan. The towing operation was going smoothly, for a while anyway. The craft got stuck just offshore of a sandy beach, a little ways from its final intended destination. The towing crews tried, but were unsuccessful in freeing it. At that point, it was decided that the Ekranoplan was to be secured in the beach surf zone while plans were drawn up on how to proceed to Patriot Park. In December 2020, the Ekranoplan was successfully hauled out of the water, protecting it from taking on water or being destroyed entirely, really. As of right now, there isn't much development in the story. I scoured social media to find some clues if the Ekranoplan is still on the same beach. Judging by the most recent posts, it seems very likely. Hopefully, the MD-160 gets to its final resting place in Patriot Park, and this strange craft of history can be preserved for generations to come. Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.